Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Umair, and I have today Umair, another Umair, uh, Umair Gadget. That's how that's how you pronounce it, right? Uh, yes. Umair Gadget with me. He's a, a founder and a co-founder of Savior, and uh, we'll have an have an interesting session of uh, startup stories with him uh, today as well. So, Umair, why don't you take a little bit of time and introduce yourself uh, uh, about your background and uh, anything that you want to say about yourself? Sure, sure. Thank you so much, first of all, for inviting me over. Um, my name is Omar, just like yourself, and you also introduced me. So uh, a little bit about myself. I have been involved with startups and the startup ecosystem for the last 12 years, long before startups were a thing in Pakistan. So the first company that we founded was Gerritech.com back in 2008. And luckily, uh, interestingly, today is the 14th year of its formation. So it's the, it's the first company that we formulated. I was at my third year of education back then. I did my bachelor's in finance. And the, while I was doing that, two of my brothers and cousins, they were graduating from NED University. And they were trying, we were all thinking about starting something. And we came up with this concept of launching a web development and WordPress theme development company. So that was our beginning, uh, Gerritech.com. And uh, then we started building more products. We realized that that services-based business models are very difficult to scale, right? And we got lucky and we got into different products. So we have, so far, I have personally been involved with three or four different startups. And uh, the savior moment came in 2020. And when we, when we had this kind of pandemic, so we had our own circle, right? So we were doing these tech companies and tech businesses and all of that. And when pandemic happened, so a lot of people within our own circle, they started approaching us that uh, now that the retail operations are gone, we have this store, we have this business, we want to do something online, we want to sell something digitally. And that's where we found this interesting gap. And I decided to jump ship and uh, take over as the co-founder and CEO of Savior. And that's when the story of Savior with me started to happen. So a little bit about Savior itself. So Savior is, is basically a, uh, first in kind, uh, first of its kind platform in Pakistan, where we actually enable businesses to sell digitally using their own web or app, and we only charge when there is a sort of like a sale, right? So that's our value. So you, 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 you help uh, businesses sell using their own what? The own websites and applications, right? So you have uh, very nice platforms where you can, as a, if you are a business, if you are a shop, if you are a store, you and you do not have the capabilities of building or um, your websites or, or, or hosting them. So there are li- nice platforms that will actually enable you to do just that, right? Like Chiku and Dukan and all those platforms, right? But what happens is that- yeah, that's the best Example could be a Shopify is also an example Shopify, of that. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but the story starts from that point onwards when it comes to the digital journey, right? So if you have that yes, Shopify store, how are you going to 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 grow it, right? So how how would so now you have an asset? Platform? You have you have an asset. You have a store, but there is no way uh, opening up a store or opening up a web asset doesn't mean that you can also sell it. So that's where exactly. you're saying exactly. the story. Okay. So that's where we come in, right? So we take the we, we hold their hands and we take it to take those businesses and we help them grow digitally, right? So we have our own channel, and that's that's how we differentiate ourselves as a platform on the consumer side of things. Uh, what happens is that so how do you the actually help them sell? How do you? I, I'm 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 jumping on to questions. Yeah, no and complete, but but just to make it more conversational. So how do you really help them sell? So the way it happens is that we have already have a user base on our platform, right? So we show your brand to those users, right? So for example, if you have Savior's app, we have one way or another campaign running and promotions are going on, and more and more users are coming and using our own application, right? So our own. Um, mobile web, uh, we have our own mobile apps, our browser extensions, our website. So as soon as your brand comes on board, we start uh, showing your brand to our user base, right? So that's how, let's say, for example, if you're a burger shop, if you are, uh, if, if you are a grocery uh, seller or whatever and whatnot, if you have a website or app, we can integrate our platform with your web or app and start showing your website or application to our user base. That's how we grow. Uh, that's how we- Is it, is it, we, is it uh, for, for me to help me understand is it more like I'm a kind of food panda where uh, they show your restaurant on their main website and but eventually a user understands from where they are buying. So, I mean, are you a food panda? So, there's a food? difference. Yeah, that's a very nice question. So, what happened was that when we started off and we started we approaching to these restaurants and merchants, 
they started confusing us with food pandas and the daras and we were like food pandas and daras are also our target market we want them to come on savior as well and we both of them are and they are very important partners for us so the way, but how the how we are different is that food panda is also about logistics and also about not just giving you the order but also about fulfilling that order how right. we are different is that we are not going we are not getting into that fulfillment uh, business or the logistics business what we do is we have the traffic we will send that visitor to your web or app right so, so it's not like we are going to the order so you are a very large affiliate traffic driving kind of a site exactly exactly now okay. that's the right word affiliate typically we call it an affiliate marketing model so this is exactly right. what we are so okay. this is how we help businesses grow so to businesses there is nothing for them to lose right so if they are coming on bo- on board and they are they are trying to grow with us so food panda is a, is an example daraz is an example we were lucky enough to have a very nice relationship with them now that they because they see the value of this particular business model because not just their local teams but their regional teams are now uh, engaged with us because they see that, that there is a different well there is there's definitely a value that the regional teams are also getting and they are working so do you, with, I mean, how they can do you do you market. generate i mean do you generate traffic out of a uh, uh, kind of a single app or it's more like an affiliate model so for instance i can generate traffic for let's say the exercise equipment on amazon by creating a fitness site and make people come to my site and then affiliately link with with the amazon so uh, so you run multiple sites multiple web properties and collectively that network is a savior or it's just one app uh, that that you get all the traffic and then distribute how it works yeah so uh, i think there are two different approaches towards growing your affiliate marketing business right so we are very different affiliate marketing business traditionally are like you do one sale and then that the relationship ends with that particular visitor right, right. so you will never know as an affiliate marketer that the, that the user who went through you you don't own that user or you do not have any kind of relationship with that right so that's sure. like an e-com business model there is no recurring revenue there is no relationship sure. what we do is that we have one app which is which is the savior app we grow the savior app using various tactics various different marketing channels but we bring all those users on savior app and then we show different brands for different categories and then based on those we try to monetize our own users okay and how do you make money in the middle i mean so so you take a certain chunk of the traffic that you or the lead that you pass on to the site if if if, exactly. if that materializes right if that if, exactly so if that if that traffic ends up making making a purchase or does a transaction because we are integrated with all these web and apps we, we get to know and we get a commission out of that so and we okay. take that commission we pass on a chunk of it to our users as cashback okay so so it's essentially a kind of a three party paying model where you are i mean for in every transaction you're paying to your customer you're paying to eventually i mean your customer is actually the user of the of the eventual business of the brand yes yes of the brand so you're paying to the brand you're paying yourself and you're paying to customers everyone is everyone is making money great nice model uh so uh, talk to us more about i mean i mean and you mentioned uh, and i was uh, i was just thinking about that point that you guys were in a services business and you uh, built this product uh, kind of a model so talk to me more about that because this is kind of a dilemma for a lot of people that they are in a services business and jumping to a product business i mean it seems daunting and how it how it works because yeah, at the end yeah. of the service business is a cash flow business you get a bucket load of cash if not even a bucket load still exactly. cash at the, yeah. the, at the end of the month it's a cash on the door as it, as i say it so how did you manage to do that and then another thing and i'm just putting two i'm kind of packaging two questions you said that you you co-founded several products i mean so there i mean it's it's difficult enough to create one business and scale it uh how do you feel about that i mean what made you jump and uh, from product to product is that you eventually would found the right fit now you're still running the other three startups how you kind of distribute the time i mean or you would vouch that yeah you have to be a co-founder yeah, yeah. so two questions over here yeah no both are very interesting questions when it comes to the, the services versus product thing i i think we got like and uh, there is no other way to put it right so very early in our career and very early in the journey of career type we realized that uh now is the time to move to product and like most of the companies now they have huge operation when it comes to services right so for them to decide that now we want to go away from services to a product model it's like a completely complete transformation 
for us it was like we are doing something we are trying to experiment on the side we started something and product took off much better in a much better way than the services and we were like it's obvious then the product things will work right number one but i think what is doable for 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 most of the businesses now who are on the services side is that maybe if they have the right idea or something like that they can create a parallel organization which has nothing to do with the services organization a parallel organization where they, they experiment with the right product and that just like you said the services model is a cash flow model where you get a per load of money on on the door so you can use some of it maybe to do some experiments on the but side other, but but if you do not create a separate organization it's never going to happen i mean within the same no. organization it doesn't happen no i don't, i don't think that's that's possible because it's all about focus right just like you said it's very difficult to create a product and 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 to scale it and build a company out of it right so which is, which would take me to the second question how were we able to do uh, multiple products right so there is the the unfair advantage that we had so right so i belong to a joint family system where we had seven brothers and cousins and all of us <laughs> you, you, you are actually, working to you are actually you are actually kind of answering my next question in this question so i i went to exactly. your side and there there's a whole list of gadgets on that side and i said come on i need to ask this question that how you are doing it so okay go ahead <laughs> yeah so it's let's like this we have, yeah, we were we this is an unfair advantage as we had so many people right so we had like a complete it's steady stream of founders coming out there so when we started off we were like three of us we were we started this me and two of my brothers we started this and then we had more people joining us along the way so we built it and then we few of us focused on one business and few of us started to focus on other so me and sad two of the co-founders were associated with savior so our 100% focus is on savior so we are not worried about other products even though they are owned by us they are under the disrupt.com umbrella but we are not no longer part of that but this is what it takes to grow those products and businesses and 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 and, and uh, at the same time uh yeah so that's that's what the growth demands so this is how we were able to do it i mean i mean this is uh, what you're talking about is all, is is actually very relevant to pakistan and its reality so i mean tell me how the internal politics work i mean this product is going much faster mine is not i want to change it i mean how the decision making works and how everything works over there yeah so it's it's more like it's uh alhamdulillah we we never had any sort of this, these problems that when product is growing uh and it's creating an issue for other products i think it's a okay. very nice uh, sense of competition right so okay. the, the way we look at it is we share a lot of knowledge with each other so what we are learning what we are what experiments are working for us what experiments are not working for us so it's like a, it continues to remain an unfair advantage for us so for example i i'm sure most of the organization when they start off there are a lot of different problems that they face when it comes to growth engineering scaling organizations hiring the right talent but we do not have that level of challenge when it comes to starting a new product or starting a new launching a new company so as 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 the co-founder and ceo of savior and i can learn from their journey and at whenever it, when, whenever there is a problem i can just re- i do and i just reach out to the founders or the entire team and say uh, this is a, i'm having this problem in my business and i need your help how would you have solved this problem so it's like a very nice uh, environment of competition and cooperation and uh, so we are trying to solve it up till now Great, great. We haven't. So, but, we never had any sort of problem with <laughs> politics or along the way. Not so far. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I hope it keep keep it that way. Uh, uh, so, talk to us more about and take us through your funding and team building journey. How that happened and what were the various stages and where are you today? Yeah. So we have raised three point three, um, and we raised it uh, in October, November. We say that's when the announcement came up. it was a first round before that we were self funding this entire project and then the entire product uh the way it came about was like it's like a not normal process i believe with most of the startups right so you build something you see that there is something that 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 makes sense there's a huge opportunity out there you can make it really 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 big and that's when you are confident that your business your idea is sustainable or there is a potential for growth and there there is a huge market waiting for you that's where you start conversation with the investors so that's how that's the model we that's the journey that we followed so we need so that's the, that's the, the 3.3 idea. million is your actually first raise before that you all kind of self funded and because you were running other business exactly. profitable business you were able to bootstrap that exactly okay. so, and uh, how did the funding happen i mean uh, for for other startups who are trying to raise money i mean how many doors you knocked how it worked out who are the investors local international what kind of advice would you like to give to people who are out there raising money 
Okay. So I think uh, we were lucky, a bit more lucky because uh, we were we did not knock at a lot of doors, right? We were very selective with our reaching out strategy. And the part of the reason why we did that was because of disrupt.com and the past experience that we had, right? So we reached out to a very selected few people and luckily our round when we were closing it, it was oversubscribed. So we actually had to say no to a few people, right? This, the advice that I think I, I, I'm not in a position to give, but I can share from my experience that I have is that right now the environment is very, very interesting for fundraising, right? So there are a lot of different funds who are coming in. There's a lot of money out there, which is available. As, long, as soon as long as you have an, a, a working idea, you think that it is, it is working. It is at a certain stage where you think that the unit economics are fixed or you have the prototype ready. You start conversation with as many uh, startups as you would like. And I think Y Combinator has amazing resources, amazing content, which is available for the startup founder. I think that is more relevant where we, they talk about how to raise funds, how, to, how many doors to knock and stuff like that. I think that is, that is better. Great. And uh, I mean, in terms of team, uh, how did you manage to create that team other than the initial founding team? How big is right now? How you structure them, motivate them, how it works? Yeah, so uh, our team right now is of 80 people approx, right? And uh, there are 80 people we are hiring on, on almost monthly basis. There are more and more people joining us. That we put a lot of emphasis on bringing the right people in because over here, there's a lot of autonomy and a lot of trust that we, we, we share with, with among our team, right? So the way we do is that there is an interesting process we call the trial process where we bring in resources for a day. Initially, it used to be up for three days up to seven days. But now it's, we have restricted it to a day where we bring that person in and that person gets to experience and there is no sort of like hidden information. There is nothing of that sort. We let them gel and evaluate our culture and we evaluate them on culture. And at the end, that's a paid uh, activity, right? So whatever they are getting now, we get it for the, for the day. At the end of that particular uh, experience, both parties have the opportunity to walk away from this kind of relationship, right? So they are like, they can say that, Okay, so I've worked here, this culture doesn't suit me and what and whatnot, and they, they're, they're free to walk away and we'll pay them for the, 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 for the day that they spent with us. And the same applies for us. So that is, that is how we bring, uh, we try to bring the right people in. And once they are in, then they are, there's a lot of different things like OKRs and CFRs, con conversations, frequent conversations, and OKRs to help them see where we are going, where they, what they are contributing to the overall journey. With them, we are able to, we, we, we keep them engaged on day-to-day -day basis. And on the third side is about the small motivational things that you can do, like celebrating small wins with, with respect to all the teams. Like for engineering, they will be different. For marketing, they will be different. For sales and commercial teams, those will be different uh, wins. So we have a nice, uh, nice um, culture of celebrating wins irrespective of where they are coming from and how big they are or how small they are. So these are a few things that we are doing in order to make sure that the team- I, I, think, I, think, I think you put it right. Uh, cultural fit is extremely important and people who fit the culture, they can make the right team. And then, I mean, you cannot have our toxic people in the company as well as people who are draggers. So, so absolutely. And I think it's a nice way of bringing someone in experience, let them experience the culture for three days, three, exactly. four days and vice versa. I think that's wonderful. So, I mean, just, just to build that, uh, where do you study any books or have studied kind of where you pick this, how the organization needs to get developed or you just picked it while working on, I mean, experience teaches us a lot of stuff. So is it all yeah. coming from experience or is it coming from learning books and other stuff as well? No, I think both go hand in hand. There's a lot of experience, a lot of things that experience teaches you. There is a, a, no doubt also that the, we also have to account for the mindset, right? When we're dealing with the people, people in the West behave much differently to a few things than people in on the Asian side of things, right? So a lot of books that are out there, they are, they are not written by the Asian authors right. or people who are who are building organization in the Asian environments, but they do teach you a lot. And when you read those books, you come up with that theory and you expect, expect, you try to implement in the Asian context. That's where things change a little bit, and that's where where the experience comes. So few things that 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 uh, you so how you adapt how it to, to local work. local environment that what experience teaches you, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wonderful. Wonderful. So Omer. Uh, where the app right now is going, I mean, traction kya hai and where you intend to take it in the next year or so, I mean, what are the plans? 
Yeah, so uh, we are growing pretty rapidly when it comes to our apps and users and the stickiness is already there. So the business is growing pretty rapidly and I think we have already cracked the formula for the growth. So it's all about how much we are able to invest in the growth and that's the function, right? So right now it's going pretty rapidly. Uh, future is very, seems very promising. Our entire focus is on how we can accelerate the growth rate. So the growth rate is there. It's amazing. It's, we are like, for example, uh, for the last quarter that we just closed, we will be, we'll be closing in the next 10, eight to 10 days. We were targeting something which was three times of our last quarter. And we were able to achieve that in first in 50% in of the time. And we had to revise our targets upwards in the middle of the quarter. And we were able to again overachieve them. Right. So that is, and those targets were ambitious, right? So when we were setting it up, when we were setting those targets, we were like, okay, these are crazy targets, but we were able to outdo them, right? So that's the kind of growth that we are seeing. And uh, when it comes to the next year, uh, our focus is on opening more cities, getting more, uh, our presence felt more strongly into different cities that we are. Right now, is it largely in Karachi? Most of our user base is in Karachi right now, but not Lahore. Yeah, mainly in Karachi, but we are getting orders from more than 180 cities now. What we want to do is make our presence feel more strongly in our primary cities like Lahore, Islamabad, and then go towards Faisalabad, Multan, Sialkot, and all those cities. One important so that's question is that on paper for the next year. And because you are referring traffic, and, and in a way, it involves your reputation as well. So, do you have an active mechanism of kind of filtering vendors who do not fulfill promises or who are not the great? Uh, suppliers or whatever because eventually eventually you are directly yeah, yeah definitely okay. yeah definitely so so what what we have is i think in the process of making what we're trying to build it will be a third party review website like which will be completely independent okay. right so we do not have any trust pilot or or site ever in pakistan which is very active right? so we have a lot of brands on the app and most of those brands are getting reviews reviews and ratings on the app right so we are keeping an eye on them and if there is a brand which is consistently getting lower orders we, we have to remove them Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, we're next round. Uh, abhi to round close kiya hai, hai recently. So, what are the plans? Next rounds kab kare or uh, kaise grow ja rahi? And who are your competitors, by the way? So, right now we are the only ones. When it comes to the cash flow platform of this sort, there is no competition as such. Uh, when it comes to the funding round, uh, wait and watch. Ask to uh, you know that better than I do. There is no right time to to raise funds. It's always we're always into fundraising. Right? So right, right. Shalat, uh, I think it's a great journey that you guys are on, and, and uh, great that you have come up with this idea. It will be an interesting episode for our audience as well. So thank you, Merv, for being with us on the on this call. Thank you so uh, much. And I really enjoyed talking to you. And let's keep in touch. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much for having me.